hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so in the previous few videos on electrical and electronics measurement we discussed about the introductory concepts related uh, to measurement the basic introduction to measurement the definition the various uh, concepts associated with it and the second video we discussed about the various types of measurement or how we can categorize measurement on the various of on the basis of various aspects so in this video we are going to discuss about the general uh, measurement system okay the block diagram of a measurement system the various stages of a general generalized measurement system so i have already discussed it in the sensors transducers and instrumentation uh, that section uh, but still we will go in a systematic way and i'm also again going to discuss it in the electrical and electronics measurement section too okay so the measurement system it consists of various blocks various stages that are involved in it and uh, we can name them as first the input signal then the sensor or transducer which is the signal conversion element then the signal conditioning and processing elements which are used for various purposes such as amplifying the signal filtering the signal noise removal all the other things then the display element or the output element so now we are going to discuss these uh, things one by one so let us look at the block diagram representation of the uh, measurement system this is the block diagram representation first we have the input signal which is applied to the sensor or transducer which performs signal conversion which is signal condition and processed by these two elements signal condition and processor and then we have the output elements which can be used for various purposes such as for display for recording of data or for employing any control mechanism and the various uh, blocks the various parts of this measurement system the power required is supplied by the power supply unit so first is the input signal so the input signal is the unknown parameter the unknown quantity of interest which we want to measure <coughs> sorry so this input signal it can be of mechanical type it can be of electrical nature it can be of optical uh, it can have optical characteristics then chemical characteristics physical whatever so as i said instrumentation engineering has links has connections with all the other branches of engineering you cannot separate instrumentation engineering from the others other department we we got to have you know some knowledge some basic knowledge about all the other branches of engineering okay because instruments are used to measure various uh, you know quantities various parameters it can be of mechanical type force pressure it can be of electrical voltage frequency current optical wavelength frequency uh, the amplitude then the chemical from the chemical concentration of various gases or various chemical uh, chemicals that are used then the other signals so the instrumentation systems the measurement systems it has the links with all the other uh, branches so this is the input signal all about input signal as i said the examples it can be this force temperature voltage current chemical concentration etc then is this sensor and transducer now this is an important block okay an important part of uh, the measurement system or the instrumentation system this elements this uh, sensor or transduction element it detects or it responds to the input quantity or parameter of interest the measurement the signal which is to be measured or detected 
and it produces an output signal in the same form or in different form when it is in the same form it is called a sensor when it converts that signal into some other form signal conversion takes place then it is called as transducer and i have already posted a video about the difference between sensor and transducer sometimes it is you know you know taken to be the same thing but there is subtle difference between sensor and transducer i have already posted a video related to that you can check out that video in the sensors transducers and instrumentation section so the sensor or transducer it detects any change in the parameter of interest for example for temperature measurement we can use rtd thermistor thermocouple for rtd and thermistor temperature change is converted into resistance change for thermocouple temperature change is converted into a certain potential difference then for uh, force and pressure measurement we can use borden tube or bellows in which the force or pressure is converted into linear or angular displacement similarly we can uh, use uh, various other instruments which employ various types of sensors and transducers so this is the sensor and transducer okay the input signal is applied to it so it is the first block then we have to discuss about signal conditioning and processing element now why signal conditioners and processing elements are required now the various types of uh, sensors and transducers which are used and also the signal of interest sometimes their magnitude their amplitude level is very less okay and uh, also it is uh, combined with a lot of other interfering and distorting signals the original interest uh, signal of interest is masked between the other uh interfering and distorting signals especially this happens in the biomedical uh, instrumentation systems you know biological signals various signals such as ecg emg uh, we, we, i discussed this thing in the biomedical instrumentation section as well so for that we need to have signal conditioning and processing elements which will be used for various purposes such as the amplification of the signal okay to raise the strength of the signal to a higher level then in order to remove the unwanted and interfering distorting signals we need to have proper filtering circuits then sometimes the output of the sensors and transducers it is non linear which makes it very difficult to understand to comprehend so various types of linearization techniques are used to have a approximate linear relationship between the input and the output and also for frequency response matching it is used so that all the signals they are within a fixed frequency range then also it is used as a backup power supply for the various blocks of the measurement system so the examples of these signal conditioners and processors it can be uh, voltage amplifiers power amplifiers operational amplifiers various types of filters high pass low pass band pass band stop then the bridge circuits voltage divider circuits microprocessors microcontrollers these are all signal conditioning and processing elements okay so this is the second block and the third block the signal conditioner and the signal processor then the output element okay the output element can be used for various in various ways okay it can be interpreted in various ways first the most important the primary objective of the output element is to provide a visual representation of the signal the input signal which is being measured for example let us say we are measuring a force or pressure signal so the output element represents it in a graphical way in a uh with the x and y axis where the x axis can be the input y axis can be the output for example uh the x axis can be the input quantity 
force in that unit in newtons or whatever and the y can be the output in terms of voltage or current there are various ways in which we can uh, program the system with the help of uh, microprocessors and microcontrollers to give the output in various ways as per our requirement okay uh, it can be that also uh, it can be used for uh, recording the data which is measured for future reference for f then also for employing control mechanisms especially this comes into play in the process control and industrial instrumentation and automation in that uh, um, when you apply the measurement data in that way it will be used so these are the various uh, ways in which the output can be done for display for recording for as control element okay the examples of output elements can be the pointer scale arrangement the simplest example then lcd display cathode ray oscilloscope then the dso inkjet recorder digital printer hard disk for, these are for storage and recording and various types of actuators can also be used for employing control mechanisms so this is the output element then we have is the power supply which is basically a regulated power supply unit okay which supplies the necessary power to the various blocks sensors transducers signal conditioner signal processing elements and the output elements as per their requirement so the power supply has a separate circuitry uh, i discussed uh, the basic regulated power supply unit uh, that basic concept in a separate video you can check out that so this is the block diagram of a general measurement system the basic layout of a measurement system okay all of these blocks they are important and they are an important part of this measurement system without any of these blocks the measurement system will fail to work in the way it is supposed to work okay you take out any of these blocks and the efficiency of the measurement system will decrease by a you know in a huge way so these are the various uh, concepts associated with the general measurement system which we discussed so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much